So today, we're finding the missing terms in an arithmetic sequence. Now remember, an arithmetic sequence is when you have a sequence that repeatedly adds the same amount every single time. For example, if I gave you 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, this is arithmetic because we're repeatedly adding 2 to get the next number in the sequence. All right? Now, in today's situation, I'm going to give you the first number in the sequence and I'm going to give you another number much further down and we've got to figure out what the numbers are in between. All right, and I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it. Uh, here's an intuitive way to do it. So uh, the first number in our sequence is 1. We don't know the second and third but we know the fourth number is 13. So we know that it went from 7 to 13. So the sequence increased by the it increased by 6. All right. But it increased by 6 in 1 2 3 steps. So if it went up 6 in 3 steps, we could do 6 divided by 3 to figure out how much it's going up per step. All right. 6 divided by the 3 steps gets you 2 which tells you that the sequence must be increasing by 2 each time. So 7 plus 2 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11, 11 plus 2 is 13. Boom, we got it. All right, so that's the more intuitive way to do it. Now, if you want to do a more algebraic method, you can think of it this way. All right, we're starting at 7 and we're repeatedly adding the same amount every single time. Let's call it A. We're repeatedly adding A, and let's say we don't know what A is. So we could set up an equation for this. We could say we start at 7, we added A, we added another A, we added another A, and we ended up at 13. So we've got 7, plus 3 a's is equal to 13. So we can solve this algebra equation and figure out how much it's going up by. So if I subtract 7 on both sides, I get 3a equals 6. That looks familiar because I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And look, 6 divided by 3 gets you 2. So we could have figured out that it was going up by 2 this way also by say, setting up an equation. All right. Now, depending on how you think about it, some people can intuitively, intuitively kind of figure this out, and some people like to have the equation. So there's two different methods to do it, okay? So let's do a couple more here. So this one, we're starting at 11, and notice it's going to negative 4. Or, so this one's actually decreasing, all right? So to figure out how much it's decreasing, it ended up at negative 4, and it started at 11, so I'll subtract those. So that tells me it decreased by 15. All right. And it decreased by 15 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps. So if it decreased by 15 in 5 steps, divide it, I get negative 3. So that's telling me that this is going to go down by 3 every single time. So let's try it. 11 minus 3 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. There you go. All right. Now, again, if you like it the algebra way, we'll set it up. It starts at 11, and we're repeatedly adding, we'll call it A again just to be consistent. We're adding A. How many A's are we adding? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 A's. And we end up at negative 4. So we can solve this equation to figure out how much it was going up by. So if I subtract 11 on both sides, I get 5a equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 5. And a equals negative 3. So we could have figured out it was negative 3 that way also. Okay? Now, a couple things to remember is 1, it can go up or it can go down. It was adding before, this time it was subtracting. This next one, it's gonna show you an example where we're not even adding a whole number each time. All right, let me show you what I mean. This one's starting at three, 
going all the way up to 5, so it's increasing by 2. All right? But look how many steps it takes to increase by 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It takes 6 steps to increase by 2. So if I set it up, it goes up by 2 divided by the 6 steps. Now we can figure out how much it goes up per step. Now 2 divided by 6 is not a whole number, but I can think of this as 2 sixths. And if I reduce this, I get 1 third. So what that tells me is this is going up by 1 third every time. Let's see if it works. 3, add a third, so I get 3 and a third. Add another third, that's 3 and 2 thirds. Add another third, that makes 4 whole. Add another third, that's 4 and 1 third. Add another third, that's 4 and 2 thirds. Add another third, that's 5 whole. Okay, so you can see, even though it was increasing by a fraction, we still solve it the same way, and it should still end up exactly at the number we, we needed it to. All right, let's do one last one. This time it's a little bit harder because notice, the sequence starts at 4, and it ends with a variable expression, 8n. But that doesn't really change how we solve the problem, all right? So we know it's going from 4 to 8n. So like we did before, we need to figure out how far that is. So we'll subtract them. We'll take where it ends up and minus where it started, OK? So that's how much it increased by total, 8n minus 4. That's how much it increased or decreased, depending on what n is, OK? But that's how much it changed. But it did that over 1, 2, 3, 4 steps. So we're going to take this and divide it by 4. All right, well, let's see what we get. 8n divided by 4 is 2n minus 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I get 2n minus 1. What that tells me is this sequence is going to add 2n minus 1 every single time. All right, so if we start with 4 and we add 2n, that'd be 2n plus, that'd be 4 plus 2n. Minus 1 gets you 3 plus 2n because we subtract the one from the whole number. And we can't subtract, we can't add n's to regular numbers, constants to variables. So we can only combine our like terms. All right, now do it again. Add another 2n to this. So 3 plus 2n plus another 2n, that gives me 4n minus 1. So that 3 becomes a 2. So this becomes 2 plus 4n. And if you notice, the number 4, it's getting smaller each time. 4, 3, 2. And that makes sense because we're subtracting 1 from the whole number every single time. And notice, the n's are getting bigger. We have no n's at the beginning. Then we had 2 n's. Now we have 4 n's. It's increasing by 2 n because that's our pattern. We're adding 2 n each time. All right, so continue one more time. Add 2 n to this, so 4 n is going to become 6 n. Subtract 1 from the whole number, so this is 1 plus 6 n. And just to check, let's see if it ends up at 8 n. So if we add another 2 n to this, 6 n plus 2 n is 8 n. Minus 1, take away the 1 from the 1, leaves me with no regular number, so we end up with just 8 n, and it works. OK? So. That's how you find missing terms in arithmetic sequences, all right? Figure out how far, how much it changes, and then divide it by how many steps it took to make that change. Or, of course, you can also just set up an algebra equation. You can do it that way too. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.